Hey everyone, uh, in this video I'm going to be making a jointer plane. Uh, it's probably the most used plane out of my quiver. Uh, I like it a lot because it's it's basically square to itself and flat on the side, so it allows you to use it on its side. Um, in this case, on a shooting board or on its side if you're edge jointing thin panels that you can't balance on top of. Or even, you know, just edge jointing three quarter inch stock um, riding on top. Uh, so, let's get into it. I'm gonna start this video by kind of rating my special wood pile. Um, this chunk of Wenge has been up there for a while. And uh, I'm actually making this for a buddy of mine who's uh, gotten into woodworking over the past year. Seems to really enjoy it. So I figured this would be, you know, a nice little Christmas present. Uh, I'm gonna start off just jointing and planing, revealing the grain and get everything squared to itself. And uh, once I can kind of see the grain and, you know, what it's doing, I'll determine uh, where to go from there. Once I kind of orient everything, I'm gonna throw a cabinet maker's mark on there and uh, it'll kind of always give me the direction uh, that I need for the plane. So the triangle, point of the triangle is facing the front and uh, now I'm kind of laying out uh, the cheeks and the center. Uh, so the plane iron's about an inch and so I'm just working my way out from the outside, getting an inch in the middle and then cutting the cheeks on the bandsaw. And then from there, I'll, I'll thin down the cheeks uh, at the planer. So those cuts off the bandsaw need to be cleaned up. You can kind of see it's rocking back and forth a little bit. I need to flatten up those cheeks and same with the center. Double check the, uh, that the dimension is correct uh, with the plane iron. And, uh, yeah, start planing it down until it's nice and flat and checking with my straight edge, you know, periodically just to see what I'm doing. Wenge's grain is a bit interlocked, and so grabbing a scraping plane or a scraper or a cabinet scraper is, is pretty pretty ideal uh, tool to use uh, to help plane it. And then, uh, you know, once uh, once everything's nice and flat, you can kind of see the joints are. You can't even see the joints. Everything is good to go. Um, I'll start to lay out the um, the forward and rear ramps. Uh, 45 degrees for the rear ramp and about 60 for the for the front forward ramp. And I'll just cut those on the bandsaw um, and then clean them up with, uh, with a hand plane after. I'll clean up the rear ramp, making sure it's flat and square and 45 degrees with my low angle block plane. And then for the forward ramp, I'll actually do some kind of artsy fartsy stuff. I'll, I'll use my, my gouge and create these little divots um, in there. It's, it's kind of a cool aesthetic. I was taught this way um, from Inside Passage uh, School of Fine Cabinet Making in Vancouver. Highly recommend checking it out if you're really interested in this stuff. And so the finishing touches on the ramps, just take them to the shooting board and uh, clean, them, clean up the edges right there. And uh, you'll, you'll see how this, uh, how this works in a later, later section. Um, the rear ramp needs needs a groove in the center to accept the uh, the cap, uh, the screw cap for the uh, for the plane iron. So I'll center up that groove, make sure it's deep enough so that that, that cap uh, can, can slide freely. And I'll actually use the cutoff from the center uh, to act as a block. It's the same angle, it's kind of, kind of cool how that works. With that groove set, I can place my, my iron and reference the bevels that I made at the shooting board. And with that set, I can place my other cheeks, clamp it all together, and get my locator dowels drilled in.
The dowels are used just so that you can take the plane apart and put it back together in the exact same position that it was um, when you drilled it out initially. With the dowels in, I can now locate the crosspin. So I'll just carry over a line uh, from the rear ramp and then locate it that way. And with the crossbin located, I can go ahead and drill it out using a 5 16th inch uh, drill bit. Uh, I'll use that center section I cut out in the beginning, put that back in there so it kind of acts as a, as a stop for any blowout um, happening on the inside. I'll generally make a few crosspins whenever I make a plane, so I'm just going to scavenge uh, one from an earlier build. Uh, it's uh, going to be African Blackwood. With the crossbin fit, I'll go ahead and round over the tenon. So with the crosspin fit, I'll go ahead and clamp up the, the plane and make sure that uh, it can still rotate freely once it's under pressure. So once I'm happy with that, uh, I'll go ahead and put it all back together uh, and put in some wax uh, in the corners just so if there's any squeeze out when I go to glue it up, it's not gonna, uh, I'm able to easily remove the glue and it also kind of gives me an, uh, an idea of where the cheeks and the uh, forward and rear ramps are going to be, so I know where to apply my glue. All right, now my favorite part, I'm gonna start shaping the plane. Uh, I'm gonna grab my old joiner and just kind of roughly mark out the dimensions of it and start to take away material. That center section that I cut out in the beginning is also going to be uh, the material that I use for the wedge. And so I just freehand that um, on the bandsaw. After that's done, I'll go ahead and give the plane a once over. Final surface treatment, kind of plane off any irregularities, file it down, make it, you know, feel really nice in your hands.
flatten the plane, uh, I take it over to my table saw, because I know it's a pretty flat surface with that cast iron, and uh, just kind of go over it, uh, check it with my straight edge, just to make sure, you know, it's dead flat. And if it's dead flat, we're good to go. Well, that should do it. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. I appreciate it.